Mr. Jong? Yes, hi Noni. Masa apa yang lambat? Puluh pun lambat juga. Sorry. Hmm. Amanah Azri, are you here? Amanah Azri, belum lagi? Belum. Okay. Saya akan start. Okay, we're going to go through today the requirements to be the estate agent. Call is now being recorded. So the code of conduct that uh, you need to observe when you be an estate agent. Chua, are you here? Chua, Chua Tian Wan, are you here? Um. Can you see my screen? Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, if you can go through ethics and professional practice, this is your code, eh? the ID 2004, and I'm Once you have gone through the uh, success, the briefing, the one day course, and then you have been uh, submission by your real estate agent to the board. It's not done by you. You need to everything needs to be done by real estate agent. Huh? So every estate agent 
question, I demand 50 rand to work under him, become a negotiator, 50 by zero, eh? Just to be only 20, but the board has increased to 50. Okay, we're not going to go to, go to rent because rent is those unqualified. Kalau kita kita kata cakap, because the minimum threshold to be an SC agent is just a diploma holder. Means rent is anybody who don't have qualification in real estate, they can be just SPM. That's the minimum. Or oh, they can have a degree in any other profession. Any other degree. Any other degree. degree. It can be degree in accountancy, degree in engineering, degree in law. There's many, many estate agents who have many, many degrees, human resource, I don't know. Because, because I rent, because, because the requirement is just SPM as the minimum entry to become rent. But, but for the registered estate agent, the minimum is diploma. You have to go through the website of the board, the relevant diploma that is recognized by the board. Can you, can you check the website board sekarang? Can you check? Boleh? Can you go through and check what is the example of diploma or what are the example of the, the qualification that is recognized by the board to be an estate agent? Boleh? Can you? Hello? Hello people? Yes, yes. Doing now. Yes, doing now. Saya akan panggil siapa-siapa. Amirul, boleh dengar ke? Adiba Suraya, are you here? Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Go and check the, Go and check the website. Board website. Get an example. Get an example of what is the requirement, what is the, what is the qualification that is recognized by the board to be an estate agent? Yes. Okay. Dapat? Abang Nazri dah masuk? Belum? Wasan, are you here? Still not here. Okay, dapat? Dah ada? Siapa yang dah dapat? Would you like to share? What is the example of qualification that is recognized by the board to be an estate agent? Example, Min Yao. Min Yao. Still searching, still searching. Still searching. So simple one. Diploma in estate agency. Diploma in estate agency from, it has to be specified, diploma in estate agency from? From Bovia. From Bovia, there is the exam by the board itself. Kayun, is it? Yes. Okay, other than the, the exam by the board, we have the qualification that is that are provided by the higher institution, both public or private higher institution. Example? UITM Shah Alam. UITM Shah Alam. What's the name of the program there with that? Saya panggil dia juga. Diploma in Estate Management. Diploma in Estate Management UITM Shah Alam. Lain daripada tu, ada lagi yang lain tak? Loving Yao. Okay, Min Yao, you have that? Uh, UTM Perdana What? Campus. Uh, diploma in Valuation and Diploma in Property Management. Cuba. Hello? What's the expiry date of that diploma? Uh, yes, 2000 to 2004 and for diploma in property management is 2005 to 2018. So, that's not there. Why do you use the board? Don't provide <laughs> Okay. Aswin? Ada? Uh, I'm gonna try this. Inspan? Inspan. What's the name of the program? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, in UTHM, Diploma in Estate Management. Diploma in Estate Management, UTHM? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. You think so? You tembak. Saya suruh check dekat website. Kenapa yang you think so? There's no yeah. diploma check. in Estate Management. Yang lain semua dah bagi tahu. So, yang lain semua dah, dah, dah famous. Yeah. Kenapa, Aswin? Tak dengar. Apa yang you bebel? Uh, I am looking for it. Yeah, but there's no such diploma by UTHM. They don't provide diploma. So oh, they only have degree. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, okay. You <laughs> not tembak that your line, boleh? You cannot tembak me. Okay. Well, I'm, I told you I'm trying. <laughs> right, you're trying, but you come up with the wrong answer. Right. Okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay Fawaz? Fawaz? Apa program, apa qualification yang recognized by the board untuk jadi estate agent? Hello? 
Ikhwan. Awas ni tak pernah ada. Uh, ada, ada, ada. Tunggu Abdul Rahman UDC College, TUC. Taruh, okay, TUC. What's the name of the program? Uh, uh, yang, yang, yang apa ni, yang tak expired lagi, Diploma in Real Estate Management. Okay. Take 1 Ogos 2018 to December 2023. Okay, yang dah expired? Yang dah expired, Diploma in Technology Property Management. Okay, ada, uh, okay, itu contoh. Fawaz? Thank you, Fawaz. Contoh, Fawaz. Mana pula lah dia pergi? Tak jumpa. Tak jumpa? Pergi cari kat mana yang tak jumpa? Fazliana? Fazliana ada? Aswin tak yes, jumpa? Okay, contoh. Hmm, saya pun tengah mencari sebenarnya yang diploma punya. Yeah. Punya lah banyak kalau pergi website board tu. Okay, hmm. I'm not going to go through that, cari sendiri. We have few. Saya heran kenapa you all tak sebut you all punya degree. You don't have to search for it. You know from day one your degree is qualified to be an estate registered estate agent. That's why I asked last time Chua because he's practicing estate agent Ren so much into it and he's not here today. Whether he wants to be just an estate agent or he wants to practice as a valuer. Because your degree qualified you to become an estate agent. The difference between diploma and degree is diploma, you need to undergo two years. Two years supervision as a PEA. But with a degree that is recognized by the board, your working experience is, is uh, reduced to one year. Boleh faham? So Aswin, tadi kita ada satu dekat in Spain, that's the only certificate that the board recognize and uh, that's the only certificate, the rest are all diploma because the minimum threshold to be an estate agent is diploma. So, untuk in Spain, there is a program known as Certificate of Estate Agency. So, that is the only certificate recognized by the board as an entry to be an estate agent. The rest are all diploma and degree. The main reason why INSPAN is given because INSPAN is under JP, INSPAN is part of JPPH and INSPAN is not a higher institution. So they are provided by JPPH and they do not have the authority to provide diploma, even certificate pun dah lama because now if you, but uh, you can still go there. Because if you provide diploma and uh, degree and also all those education requirements, the organization is uh, abide to the requirements by KPT, Ministry of Education. And at the same time, they have to fulfill the requirements by MQA as well. So JPPH is under Ministry of Finance. They are not under Ministry of Education. They are not a higher education provider in that sense because by the act, any organization that want to offer a program in education, they must have the license and permit if they are not a public university to suggest. So in Spain, it's a, it's a special case. So I don't think you can have any other organization that will be approved by the board as at a certificate level. Okay, now we can go through. The three main professions we have gone through the LAM Act section berapa, the valuers, appraiser, estate agent, property manager, section berapa ni, kita dah gone through hari tu. Uh, section berapa, if one, kita ada tiga professions as far as the board, the, the act is concerned. If one, Aswin, you are the one yang provide hari tu. Section berapa ni? Hello? If one. Sekejap. Yeah. Lah, hari tu you yang present ni. Oh. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> you yang present your register. Lepas tu you lupa. Hmm. Dah, section berapa? Dalam your register, kita ada tiga. Three main professions. Valuers, appraiser, estate agents and anybody nak masuk ke? Tak ada. Let Is me know kalau ada. Ha, session berapa? Uh, Dalam register lah. 14. Oh. Yeah, Masya Allah, Masya Allah. <laughs> okay. K, 
kita ada section 14 kita ada semua all the profession dekat situ in the register and kita ada uh, authority to practice in a respective section as far as the profession is concerned eh? okay if you can move so who are the registered estate agent is a name who has been entered under part 3 of the register part 3 of the register under section berapa tadi ikhwan Ikhwan, section berapa? Section 14. Okay. Section 14 ya. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, saya key in dekat sini. So that lepas ni saya akan, uh, lepas ni saya akan share with you all with this one. Uh, you all can boleh ambil yang ini. It's section 14, subsection. Hello, section 14, subsection berapa? Uh, three. Sub 1, Sub 3 Eh, Sub 3, Sub 3 dulu lah, mana boleh Sub 3 ya. Sub Section 1 Sub Section 1, A 3 Ha, banyak tu Barulah 3, banyak tu Sub 3 Enik pula dia, Sub Section 3 dah jadi yang no member alteration dah cerita lain, dah salah Okay to whom authority to practice has been issued by the board so authority to practice that has been uh, by the board is under section berapa untuk SA agent tadi kita kata part 5A kan who can be registered SA agent SA agent is registration is under part 5A kalau tengok part 5A section 22A are you with me? yes part, uh, part 5A eh boleh? Are you with me? Dapat tak? Part 5A, section berapa? 22A. Ha, 22, oh, lebih lah punya dah cakap tu. 22A eh. Okay, so kita ada section 22A, capital A bukan subsection eh. Dia tak dia baru tambah kemudian yang ini. Bila kita buat amendment, dia tambah so dia tak ada yang lain, dia just letak saja. Actually, I have that kat bawah tu pun. Right, so upon submission of application using form B, form A untuk apa? Form ada A tak? Ada A dengan A1, B and B1. Betul? Betul. Okay, so A untuk apa? Uh, register value. Register value A1. Professional value. Professional value. Okay, we have A register value, A1 professional value. So form B untuk register estate agent. And this is the section 22A of the Act and form B1 untuk professional members. So we are now going to go through registered estate agent dulu eh. The registered estate agent sahaja. Okay, so payment of fee approved by the board. This is a requirement. You must pay and your form must be complete. Okay, when you submit the form. Okay, form B. Cuba tengok form B dekat belakang dalam rules. Kita ada form B. Boleh buka. Form B dalam rules tak. untuk ask. Dapat? Dapat. Punggah surat 135. Eh, 135. Form B. <laughs> rule 17 eh. Dia berkait dengan rule 17. Okay. If you can go through rule 17. Semua dah ada rules kan sekarang ni kan? Dapat belum? Yes. Okay. Rule 17. Kita ada forms for application. Right, kita ada form so application. This is under Rule 17. Boleh? Amin. Can you go to Rule 17 untuk application for form B? Right, and if you can have the form B, page one berapa? Min, uh, Liguan, saya punya 135. I'm not sure about your page saja. Form uh, B. Form, sama eh? Sama-sama. Uh, okay. Okay. Kita tengok tadi section 1 of section 22A and then kita ada section 15A lagi satu. Kalau buka section 15A, 15A. Are you with me? Okay, tengok section 15A. Section 15A, you talk about application for authority to practice. Ada? Kita ada section 22A. Kita ada section 15A. Are you with me? 
Section 15A is yes. application for authority to practice and he must submit the arrest, uh, arrest, uh, uh, application for authority to practice for estate agents further clarify under Section 22B. Are you with me? So kita ada Section 15A. Ada? Uh, Are you with me? Yes, ada. ada. Application using form B and then is under is provided under section 15A. Boleh dapat? And then kita ada section 22B. Boleh? Are you with me? Susan, uh, are you here? Professor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nak minta lambat sikit. Siapa lambat? Tak dengar. Apa yang lambat? Slow down. Slow, slow, slow down. Oh, slow. Saya so cakap slow sikit. Yes, because because we are not 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 like Professor. You are familiar with the book already. We need to okay, let me just say so. No need. Okay, no problem. Cakap. Sebab tu saya cakap cakap. Kau tengok saya cakap laju lah. Saya memang cakap laju. Okay. Application. Okay, now you buka rules. You buka rules yang dekat belakang. Pegang page yang rules tu. Pegang page yang rules yang 135. Can you see? Okay, kita tengok form B. Okay, satu-satu. Form B, rule 17. Right? Are you with me now? Kita go satu-satu. Yes. Alright. Form B, rule 17. Now, buka rule 17. Sudah. Sudah. Rule 17 senang saja. It talk about the form. So, form B derived from rule 17. Okay? Alright. And then, boleh? Boleh, boleh, so boleh. dalam rule 17 dia juga cakap subsection 2 ada processing fee as per third schedule. Okay, kita simpan dulu yang itu boleh but take note kita ada payment of fee dalam bullet saya nombor 4 itu dalam as per third schedule. Are you with me? Boleh faham yang itu? Saya cuba nak cari sekarang so that you boleh nanti boleh cari dan tidak pening. Boleh. Boleh. Okay. Kita ada third schedule. But you see pegang you punya uh, form B tadi tak habis lagi ya. Eh? Form B tadi kita belum habis. If you can go back to form B, kita dah ada, kita dah go to rule 17 and kita dah ada payment dia as per the third schedule. If you go back to form B, rule uh, page 135, the other mention application for registration and authority to practice. Lik Guan, can you baca for me? Lik Guan, can you baca the heading of form B? Lik Guan. Okay, Minya baca. Lik Guan tak dengar apa, bagaimana pula. Minya. Okay, application for registration and authority to practice as a registered estate agent under subsection 1 of section 22A and section 15A of the Valuables Appraisers and Estate Agent Act 1981. Yeah. Right, so as I mentioned, rules has yet to be, uh, the new rules has yet to be approved by the minister, so we are still using the old rules as per 1986, eh? Okay, even though the act has been improved as per 2018. Right, kalau yang tadi heading ni ada baca tadi section 22A, if you can go back to section 22A, kita dah go through tadi section 22A talk about apa dia Aswin? Hello. Aswin. Registration of Registration of estate agent eh, section 22A, kita ada subsection 1 anti subsection 3. Are you with me? Right, itu untuk section 22A untuk registration and the form itself also referred to section 15A. Right, so if you can go to section 15A, boleh? If one, section 15A talk about what? Uh, application for authority to practice. Okay, ada beza kat situ. 22A is about registration of estate agent. You register yourself dulu. Once you dah dapat lepas you punya TPC and fulfill the requirements. Once you register, 
And then you can apply application for authority to practice as per section 15A. Kalau baca section 15A, dia mention dekat situ, registered estate agent, authority to practice is specifically mentioned under section 22B. Boleh? So you go to section 22B, it talk about estate agency practice. What do you want to practice as an estate agent? Boleh? Okay? Boleh. Boleh. Okay. Okay, now we don't have to go through detail until you're opening. Okay, we can go down. Now we're going to move. Kita ada payment of fee as per the third schedule and approval by the board. Hari tu ada tiga group yang dah present on the fee. How much is the fee to be an estate agent? Lavinia, you yang present hari tu. Lavinia, dalam third schedule as per the rules, kita ada estate agency fee. How much is the fee to be an estate agent? Lavinia, oh, Wahida dengan Amira. Dalam third schedule. Hello? Lavinia? 75. 75 ringgit. Are you sure? Estate agent. Processing fee is 75 ringgit. Registration fee under rules 20 and 28 is 150. Ada? To authority. Uh, 200. Uh, apa dia? The, for the, the authority to practice is 200 ringgit. 200. Registration is 150. Authority to practice is 200. Renewal every year is 200. Okay. Dia sama, 200. Even though yang baru property management also 200. So meaning if, if in my case, I want to practice, I want to renew my authority to practice for all the three valuers, estate agent and property management, I need to pay 600. Right? So the other dekat situ, if you can go to third schedule, page, I'm not sure about your page, part A, eh? mine is under page 158. Boleh? Boleh Aswin? Boleh Ishira? Shira, are you, are you here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so think, ada. Okay, dalam third schedule, part A, fees, kita ada processing fee rule 17. Kita dah go through tadi pakai form B, kan? And then kita ada registration fee dalam rules 20 and 20A. Can you now buka rules 20 and 20A? Boleh? And rules 20 and 28, it talk about application for registration for authority to practice as registered valuer, registered estate agent, and 90 days the approval. You have to pay registration fee, fee for an authority to practice as prescribed in third schedule. There are two perkara yang tak, tak berbeza. Eh? One is registration fee, and then another one is for an authority to practice dua. Eh? Okay, processing fee is yang uh, register yang mula-mula sekali. Right, okay. So, kena bayar not only the registration fee, is also for an authority to practice. So, 20 talk about registration fee and fee for authority to practice. 20A talk about details on the application. If you don't pay, then you be given an, a penalty and then and so on. That one is just a penalty. Boleh? So, and then if you move to the last bullet of this slide, no person can be registered unless he has been registered as probationary estate agent. This is a requirement under part three. You cannot be an estate agent unless you have gone through as a probationary estate agent. Boleh? So, meaning? Boleh? Boleh. Boleh. Okay. Kalau tengok probationary estate agent, okay, tengok pada requirements under 22D. Section 22D, boleh? Qualification of registration of estate agents, subject to group, no person shall be entitled to have his name entered under part three unless he has been registered as a probationary estate agent. This is under section 22 D. So this is a mandatory under the act. Bukan sebagai policy board sahaja ya. You get me? Hello? 
Yeah. So I thought, okay, I can share with you. I thought I have, I'm not sure I have shared with you or not, but uh, there is a case, uh, application by one of the members, not members, one of the uh, those candidates who has the, the, the qualification in real estate, but he failed to, it's not that he failed, he don't bother to register as a probationary member. Right? Probationary members for estate agent, sebab tu saya katakan tadi, kita kena ada buku ni. This is the rules and TPC to be an estate agent practice. Kalau ada buka buku ni, estate agent, dia ada specifically mentioned dekat dalam requirement here is you must ada two continuous years except for degree one year, right? So it has to be full-time basis in estate agency fee or establishment approved by the board and be supervised by estate agent. Do you have this book? Tadi hari tu siapa nak share buku ni? Adiba, have you shared dalam WhatsApp group? Page three. Adiba? Belum, belum. Tonight. Tonight, okay. Take note, salin semua yang lain ya, catat ya, requirement of professional experience. Kalau if you can go through item number five, page three, kita ada 5.01. I want you to check with malam ni bila dah dapat buku ni. You need to have two continuous years except for degree. Diploma is two continuous years and degree is one year. And you must work on a full-time basis in an estate agency firm or establishment approved by the board and be supervised by a registered estate agent. That's why saya highlight, saya tanya Chua, Chua are you here already or you're not here yet today doing business? Kalau you want to practice an estate agent, okay, you cannot, oh this one is different. Uh, all right, that one is a value word. Sorry. So as an estate agent, it has to be on a full-time basis. You cannot be a part-time as an estate agent under uh, when you are undergo the probationary estate agents period. Boleh faham? Okay, ada soalan setakat ni? Ada soalan? Saya pergi laju sangat. Dah okay? Susan, any question? Uh, Prof, can you repeat, repeat back the 5.0, item 5.0? Item 5 eh, dalam item 5, page 3 eh, dalam buku ni. Uh, rules and guidelines to the TPC for estate agency practice, eh? right? Kita ada item five is the period of experience. The period of experience, it mentioned in item 5.01, you have to have a minimum of two continuous years. Two continuous years except for graduates in degree, with degree. So for diploma is two continuous years. The key word here, continuous. You tak boleh ada break, eh? right? And then the other requirement is you should be working on a full-time basis in an estate agency firm or establishment approved by the board and be supervised by a registered estate agent. Meaning, it's not necessary you work in an estate agency firm. You can also work or establishment approved by the board. Meaning, if you work in a, in a government department or if you work with a developer, as long as you obtain the approval by the board, as long as you are supervised by a registered estate agent, because to be supervised by a registered estate agent, it need not be an, an in-house registered estate agent. You can have what we term as external supervision. Okay, so there is a big conflict there because it is a full-time basis. Even though you are working uh, at an establishment, meaning with a developer, and if you don't have registered estate agent, but you work as in, on the marketing side, which is part of the area of proof experience approved by the board, you can be supervised by external supervisor. When I say external supervisor means it need not be another registered estate agent who work full-time with the, with the developer, for example, in this case, the registered estate agent can be anybody outside who is willing to be your supervisor. But at the same time, you are working full time with a developer doing estate agency job. Boleh faham? Boleh Nurul Aini? Suzan, boleh faham? Yes, yes. Thank you, Apa yang you faham, Suzan? 
uh, to be to be a registered estate agent, uh, you must be working as a full time in an estate agent firm or establishment approved by the board okay. for minimum okay. continuous two years for diploma, right. whereas for right. degree is uh, one year, right. and then right. you must be supervised by a registered estate agent. But right. the right. estate agent can be an external supervisor from another firm that is willing to supervise you. Yes, okay. So ada soalan, ada any other questions, I now move to the next slide. Uh, doctor, I want to ask, yeah. is uh, the in-spam certificate in estate agency, how long they need to practice as PEA? They are, they are equivalent to diploma. Minyao, in-spam okay. certificate is equivalent to diploma. Because they are, even though it's certificate, but their certificate is actually at diploma level. Uh, only in span certificate is termed as a professional certificate, which means their diploma, their certificate cannot be used for further study. It's only used for professional as an estate agent. That's it. You cannot use that certificate to enter university because they don't have any MQA approval. Boleh faham? Yes, Prof. Okay. So, if ada soalan lagi yang lain, if you can move. Okay, so what are their qualifications? We have gone through study, diploma or bachelor degree as accredited by the board, offered by local university, public and private, foreign universities and also partnering universities. What are the examples of partnering universities that we have in Malaysia? Which, which uh, of which their qualification, the board recognize their qualification, but they are partnering university, mean they have their university in Malaysia, and they are doing it on partnering basis. Ada contoh tak? Do you manage to go through the website tadi? Reading. Reading is a foreign university in Malaysia. It's a full foreign university in Malaysia. It's not partnering. Yes. Reading dia tak partner. Reading is actually Reading Malaysia. Okay, contoh lain. University Malaya Wales. University Malaya Wales, yes. That one is another university Malaya with uh, the university itself is a partnering university because it's between UM and Wales, the Glamorgan University, eh, Asanya, Wales University. Um, it's not termed as partnering university because the registration of IUMW is local based, it's still local. Partnering universities, we used to have Liverpool Jomos, Liverpool Jomos, Liverpool University. And they have their partners here with Imperial College last time. So that is an example. And we used also to have Heriot Ward partner with, I think, Imperial College as well. So that is a chonto where the degree, the qualification is by Imperial and Liverpool. Good was Kalil. partnering. Because when they study here, the syllabus is over there. Unlike University Malaysia uh, uh, Reading University, it is actually like uh, another, the status is University Reading Malaysia, but the program is, everything is UK based. Even the assignment, their test is all in UK context. Okay, so they are actually foreign universities operated in Malaysia. All right? Okay, if you can move, other soalan. Any question? So the process to be an estate agent, if you can go through, first you need to have a professional estate agent. Minimum continuous years, we have gone through tadi dalam page three, uh, item number five, the professional experience. And we have gone through that the requirement is minimum two years for the diploma level, except that you have degree, then you will be reduced to one year. Okay, so we have three areas of experience. Unlike registered valuer, we have eight areas of experience. Adakan? Yes. Okay, now for estate agent, we only have three areas. I'm not going to go through into detail because you have a uh, lecture special on this. Uh, professional members. Okay. So that will be the long your week. Okay, the long week. 
dalam duit mana dia ni application for progressionary members dalam week 8 yes dalam week 8 untuk application for registered or the professional members for all the three professions but in general kita ada tiga areas of approved experience kalau tengok dalam buku ni juga nanti uh, you buka page 8 ya yeah, appendix A okey dalam appendix A boleh catat dulu because nanti bila um, Adiba dah share the map things easy. Dalam appendix A kita ada areas of approved experience. Appendix A of rules and guideline to the TPC test. Sekejap saya key in dulu. Uh, siapa yang ada buku ni boleh buka. Oops, oops. Apa yang ada buku ni? Anybody? Ninya, do you have a copy? No. Ninya, tolong beli. Saya selalu suruh beli. Tapi kali ni saya tak suruh beli sebab kita nak tukar. Tapi yeah. when, when the new one will be released. Pardon? Uh, saya saya suruh sebab tu saya cakap tadi saya suruh buat benda yang tak betul which is uh, apa yang offer tadi Adiba offer to scan and then share which is not correct because you are abide by the pattern right eh so this belongs to the board but then because I know it's going to change so and we're going to change all the question or the areas of experience as well which have the practice I don't know lah macam mana nak buat nanti because it's not going to be done by not involved already okay so under appendix A rules and guidelines to TPC for the estate agency practice ada tiga areas of experience if you can go through uh, dengar dulu saya cakap kita ada area one Area one is about sale and purchase of residential, commercial, industrial and agriculture property. It's about sales and purchase. Area two is about tenancy and lease. Okay, the property remains the same. We talk about all the type of properties, the commercial, industrial and agriculture, and residential as well. And area three is about marketing of property for sale and letting. Ini lebih kepada develop or doing marketing eh. Ini sama macam project marketing as what been done by a few of your colleagues that practice as, uh, as rent eh. Okay. In addition to the areas of experience that you have to undergo, you need to submit in the logbook. Saya dah tunjuk logbook hari tu but I don't have a logbook for estate agency, not with me today. We have work diary and logbook. Benda yang sama macam yang saya share hari tu. And we also need to have a record of experience where you need to uh, list down the details of what are the properties. It's actually a summary from your logbook. Record of experience is actually a summary from your work diary and logbook. Okay, so it's another uh, summary. It's just like 10, 12 pages macam gitu. You need to highlight what are the properties that you do your marketing, what have uh, what are the properties that you have managed to close deal or you managed to uh, in, uh, show to your client for viewing purpose. Not necessarily you close your deal, but that are the experience that you undergo when you do your work diary under the supervision of registered estate agent within a period of one year or two years. And then you have a practical task which covers two to four thousand words and the practical class is actually laid down dalam you punya item number six of the rules and guideline. Boleh? Are you with me? Boleh faham Ikhwan? Practical task is under item number six. Practical task tu kena buat essay ke apa? Practical task tu macam uh, buat assignment. Hmm. Hmm, mana ke? Saya tak ada sebab sebabnya Ada kemas, ada buang-buang barang saya. Kalau ada kelas, saya boleh share. But I've given some to uh, Dr. Zafira. Nanti dia boleh share with you. Right? So, practical task is that like doing an assignment. The practical task yang kita ada dalam uh, dalam rules and guidelines ni, dia ada dua. Satu, prepare a report showing step by step of the agency process that you have sold on behalf of your client. 
and then anti final transaction means bila you practice your uh, under the PEA you need to at least close deal you think that one year kalau you tak close deal something's not correct with you because you're doing state agency work uh, task two is doing a marketing proposal I think the detail will be laid out in your lecture number 8 week 8 nanti eh Dr. Zah we go through with you and then you need to attend the TPC interview the T TPC interview dalam item number seven ada empat area property law, property taxation, estate agency principles and techniques, the topical matters and also estate agency at rules and standards. Ini juga kita akan go through in detail bila kita dah pergi week 8, Dr. Zah will go, undergo, we, we go through with you with that. Tapi saya akan uh, explain sikit-sikit dekat sini lah. Okay, ada soalan setakat ni. Boleh nampak, what are the requirements to be a registered professionary member? The soalan, okay, kalau tengok dalam section 22E, 22E, are you with me? Section 22E, okay, go back to the act, section 22E, registration of probationary estate, oh, sorry, estate agent, probationary estate, um, mana? Kita masih lagi dekat dalam Probationary Estate Agent. Okay, betul. Probationary Estate Agent dalam 22E. Boleh, are you with me? Yeah. Once you graduate, okay, once you graduate, you need to submit to the board using form apa untuk Probationary Estate Agent? B1. B1, okay, form B1, cuba buka form B1 dekat belakang sekali dalam you punya ni, form B1. Okay, tadi form B dan kita ada form B1, section, are you with me? Dapat? Dapat. Okay, form B1 under rule 17 juga, go back yang sama juga tadi, application under 22D. Okay, 22D is an application untuk jadi probationary estate agent. Kita dah go through tadi that to be a registered estate agent, you need to go through, you need to be registered as a probationary estate agent. Okay, and probationary estate agent, you need to have that relevant qualifications. Kita dah cakap tadi, if you have a minimum diploma, two years supervision under registered estate agent. If you have degree, it's one year experience as an estate agent. Boleh? Under the estate agent. Right? So, dalam Prof. form B1. Prof, yes. repeat ni ya, bro. Repeat, repeat. Uh, Saya lost. Form, you lost sejak pergi mana? Mana ni, Afiq? Nak repeat kat mana ni? Okay, form B1. Okay, form B1 untuk jadi registered probationary estate agent. PEA eh. Probationary estate agent dalam mention under rule 17 but probationary estate agent is related to the EA dengan PEA. To be an EA, you must be a PEA dulu. You tak boleh jadi EA straight away. You kena ada that PEA. Boleh faham Afiq? Boleh, Afiq. boleh. Dapat. Okay. To be a PEA, you must have a relevant qualification. Section 22D, subsection 2, mention about qualification recognized by the board. Minimum yang saya go through tadi adalah diploma. Exception of Certificate by InSpan. So I explain tadi why InSpan is exception case. Other than that, in general, is diploma or degree. If you have only diploma, your minimum period continuous two years. Saya dah cakap dekat atas itu dalam slide saya tadi, minimum of two years untuk diploma holder. And if you have degree in the relevant Qualification recognized by the board, it is reduced to one year. You have to undergo probationary estate agent for either two years or one year under the supervision of an estate, registered estate agent. Okay? So that is the requirement dalam 22D. Boleh faham? Okay. 
So now, make sure dalam borang ni nampak simple eh. But if you miss the date, sometimes the board will return back because it will term as your, you submit the form as incomplete. Because if you can go to form B1, you have to inform the board on your name, date of birth, your IC, passport number if relevant, citizenship, place and date issue, residential address, business address, and then you uh, you have attained 21 years, you have passed the exam, you are not under suspension, you are not declared bankrupt, and you attach a fee of how much. A simple thing is, kalau dalam page 138, item number E, form B1, are you with me? Form B1E, yeah. you mentioned that I attached the prescribed fee. Minya, are you with me? Yes. Okay. Attach a prescribed fee processing fee of berapa ringgit tadi ya? Eh? Is it 75 ringgit? Yes. Processing fee? Okay, 75 ringgit processing fee. If you leave 75 ringgit a minimum processing fee or you just leave blank your RM there, the board may return back your application because it's termed as incomplete submission. So make sure every single thing required by the board, you must fill in. The date, the signature, the declaration by the employer, registration of your employer, signature, and the date, and the name must be, everything must be completed and in order. There are a lot of cases where the board just return back because you don't fill in the date. Simple thing. You don't fill in the attached prescription uh, processing fee of 75 ringgit. Even though you attach a fee processing fee, but your form you did not mention. So the, your form is termed as incomplete form. So that is a seriousness there. Boleh? Okay. Boleh? Okay, now we go back to 22E. Registration of the Probationary estate agent, tapi yang ni nanti akan, they need other requirements to be the registered PEA, which we will go through in your week 8. Eh? Okay, now we move. Ada soalan setakat ni. Hello, Aswin, are you okay? Nuraini, are you still here? Faziana? Shelly, are you here? Yes, yes Prof. Yes, Prof. Yes, are you here? Adipa, yeah. okay, Amiru, are you here? Ada soalan Amiru, boleh faham? Amiru, Amira, are you here? Aswin, boleh faham? Yes. Yes, apa yang you faham setakat ni Aswin? Cuba uh, you explain. That those who have degree one year, those without degree two years, which includes those without who degree okay. means what? Aswin, without degree uh -huh. means? I'm coming that. So those without degrees, which includes diploma and the certificate from InSpan, will have to spend. You don't have, Aswin, you don't have to mention about certificate from InSpan. Just say okay. diploma saja. All right, okay, diploma. Uh, okay. And... Uh, Lagi? So, so the, two years, the, the two years must be continuous. And the yes. one year, it's just one year. It's not say. continuous. It yes. has to be continuous. Yeah. Eh? Right. Yeah. Okay. So take note, once you graduate, the submission, the requirement of the submission is the appointment letter and the scroll, not just your transcript of result and transcript pun kena submit, your degree or diploma scroll also must be submitted. So the board has actually a few cases from other universities, so far not from UM, when the transcript of the result is the date of the transcript is later than the date of the scroll. Do you think that is correct? Agaknya lah, Aswin. Kata hati, kata tak. Yang mana yang betul? The date of the transcript must be earlier than the date of the scroll or can the date of the transcript, full transcript result can be later than the scroll? Boleh tak? I think transcript first and then scroll. Ah, transcript dulu baru scroll. Kalau transcript, transcript to full transcript is to denote that you have completed your study. And then now when you have completed, now you can only be awarded the scroll. Kalau transcript tak, had, tak belum endorsed, mana macam mana boleh keluar scroll. But there are cases from the private universities 
where they are just doing business. When we say we need a scroll before the student, because they said they only have, they have so many intake. So, and then they only have one uh, convocation. So the tendency is if you have the convocation, for example, in September, but in September, they have another section that will be will, will completed in December. So that particular students need to wait for another year, next year, before they can attend the combo. So they will have they like something like they waste one year. So what happened is the private universities being doing business, they issue the scroll first when the student have yet to complete. Is it correct to do that? Minyao, Susan, Kalau you were the one who assessed, are you going to reject that kind of application? Minyao? Yes. Ah, Susan, are you going to accept? Yes. Ah, ha, bukan unprofessional, there's a broad daylight cheating. Okay. So you, because I'm, I'm highlighting this, because you once you graduate, you may be out there attached to a private uh, university. Who knows? Because you may be appointed as a, a senior person, ke, I don't know. Okay, come back to this one. So these are the area of approved experience, which I said will be uh, in detail when you are uh, in your week eight until you can explain. Kita ada tiga area. Area one, sales and purchase. This is the keyword, sales and purchase. So area two is tenancy and lease, right? And then kita ada area three untuk marketing. This is a project marketing, right? So marketing is for both. It's either for sales or for letting. A simple thing that like you receive a call that is termed under marketing, or it can be also under the first step of sales and purchase or under tenancy. Boleh? Okay. Suijong? Mana Suijong? Uh, yeah, hi. Okay. Now, you are doing which part mainly? As a rent, because as a rent, you are not eligible to be a REA. Eh? Uh -huh. You're fully aware of that, Suijong. As long as you can earn money, it's fine. Okay, Suijong. Yeah. What is the area of practice that you're doing now? Uh, more on? For me, it's marketing. Marketing, eh? because it's more on the project marketing. Yeah. Right? So we have marketing for property, for sales and letting. Again, the fees for marketing is still slightly different from the sales and purchase. Eh? We have gone through that. Okay, thank you, Sujong. So if we can move, kita ada task one tadi, task two, kita ada task one report showing step by step by the agency process. You have sold on being sold, eh? the punya keyword there, that the, the step by step that you have sold. That's the keyword, not renting. Eh? And then you have your marketing proposal. Marketing proposal for a high rise, high rise building right or a mixed housing scheme so take note the keyword here is high rise building or a mixed housing scheme the word building here is not specified so it can be office building it can be any residential building but when you talk about mixed housing scheme especially mentioned mixed housing scheme or a mixed housing scheme. So your task two must have really mixed housing scheme, which means you have mixed housing as per the housing, uh, many, many types of housing, or it can be mixed in terms of commercial and residential, right? So there's no mention about industry so don't do industrial unless the the new task has been uh, the new rules and gu the guidelines has been changed because so i don't think so because we are not uh, we are not going to allow you we're not going to approve or you need to resubmit your task to if you do marketing for industrial building or even agriculture building. because task two has specifically mentioned about High rise building, which can be either commercial or which means office or residential. It can be service apartment also, right? Or a mixed housing scheme, right? Because we don't have high rise industrial building. Specifically mentioned here is either commercial or housing. Itu saja, 
right? Because we do have candidates who submit tasks to doing marketing proposal for industrial law and he has to resubmit. So we don't, during the TPC, we don't go through the task two, he immediately, he immediately put his result for task two as fail and resubmit. Okay, take note eh? Okay, now this is the area for your TPC. We have property law, property taxation, right? We have estate agency principles and techniques. We have topical matters and estate agency rules and standards. That's it, right? Boleh? Ada soalan? Agak agaknya lah. Shelly, Shelly, are you here? Yes, Prof. What is topical matters? What is topical matters? Saya uh, tanya soalan, you want to tanya soalan. Now I ask you, what is topical matters? Hmm. Jawab, jawab. I don't know. Ha, tadi saya tanya, nobody asked hmm. me. Now you say you don't know. Hmm. Apa di topical matters? Kayun, what is topical matters? When I say any question, nobody say anything. Kayun, what is Maybe topical matters? By topic one. Apa dia? Maybe by topic one. By topic. Example? Apa yang by topic? Hmm. Example Kayun? Uh, apa yang by topic ni Kayun? Topic in the act. Topic in the act. Kita dah ada estate agency act rules and standard. Hmm. Hmm. Baik mal. Apa dia topik kemetas? Baik mal. Duduk pucung je kot. Dekat je pun. Hala tuju. Apa dia Lik Guan? Hala tuju. Current, current issue. Current issue, yes. Topical matters is all about current issue. Normally, if the candidate is very weak, if they are not prepared, but they come for the TPC, normally they don't fail topical matters unless they don't do estate agency, right? So topical matters is actually about current issue. When you talk about penjana, the, when we talk about the current is stamp duty, a waiver, exemption, when you talk about first uh, home ownership campaign, HOC, so they need to know about the current issue. It relates to now the COVID-19 pandemic. So what are the initiatives introduced by the government to assist the estate, a real estate agency uh, industry? So we talk about you need to explain, we, we deliver it to you. What do you understand by penjana? What is penjana? What is home ownership campaign? What is home ownership campaign? Agak-agaknya you yang buat business dekat sini, Sri Jong. What's the, what is the, the incentive given by the government so that you can sell more as a developer? Siapa lagi yang practice lain daripada Sri Jong? Shirley, you practice? Tak. Okay, Sri Jong. Anna Sui Jong. Hi, Doctor. <laughs> ah, you, I'm sure you, can, you want to capitalize all the incentive given by the government when you do your project marketing. Example, project marketing, you, apa jenis property yang you do project marketing? Uh, High-rise uh, condominium. High-rise condominium. So I'm sure you are very much aware of the HOC. Yeah. Apa the HOC? House ownership campaign. Bukan house lah, home lah, home rumah, tempat tinggal, bukan rumah as per the skeleton. There is a difference between home and house. Okay, home ownership campaign. So what are the example of the incentive given by the government in HOC so that you can do your business with you? Apa yang you nak attract the buyers when you talk about HOC? Uh, the 10% down payment waive. 10% down payment waive, so they don't have to come up with 10%. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's the M MOT and stamp duty waive. 
Ha, MOT and stamp duty also weigh for property. How much there is a cap? This is a ceiling. This is a cap in there. Until 1 million property. Until 1 million property. So that is example of the topical matters that we asked during the TPC. Okay, so dah boleh dapat dah satu soalan lepas satu sujung. Okay. Right. Okay, we can move. So we have property law and property taxation. What is the difference between property law and property taxation? As we in property law and property taxation, apa beza dia? Dah belajar kan? Belajar Prop banyak dah ni. Property law would include SMA, STA. So property taxation would be just taxation. You miss one important law NLC. as far as property is concerned. NLC. Yes, Bila yes. sekali kena sebut NLC. So property taxation? It's just taxation. Example? Uh, for... For good land. Apa dia? Jump. I need some help. <laughs> I check it. You can't ask me. Apa dia mean ya? Local Government Act. Local uh, Government yeah. Act, talk about rate. what? Property taxation. Apa dia Aswin? Local Government Act, talk about what? For assessment rate. Assessment rate lagi. Dia tak uh, macam tak kena mengena lah assessment rate. Boleh lah ratings. Okay, lagi? Lagi? Uh, lagi? Stand duty. Yeah. stand duty. Itulah property taxation. Ah, you talk about okay. stand duty. Stand duty comes under what act? Apa nama act for the stand duty? Stand duty act. Ada ke nama stand duty act? Stamp act. Stamp act 1949. Stamp act saja. Tak ada duty duty dekat situ. Ah, lebih okay. kurang. Tak ada lebih kurang. Duty kita tambah. <laughs> Buat Malaysia Kalau baru. saya panggil nama you hilang satu B, you marah tak? Mesti tak sebut. Mesti nama orang lain kan? Dia kena ikut nama dalam IC kan? Hmm, okay. Betul. Sama lah macam gitu. Dan saya akan cakap stamp duty act. Not correct. Dan cakap apa lagi stamp duty you pun fikir. Belum bagi tahun lagi. Um, tuk dah salah. Stamp act saja. Tak ada stamp duty act. Okay. Stamp act lagi. Apa lagi act yang berkaitan dengan property taxation? RPGT. RPGT, yes, correct. Kita ada ratings, kita ada RPGT, kita juga ada mungkin development chart sikit-sikit tu tak bagi property taxation. Okay, in, in general kita ada tiga saja. Kita ada stamp duty, kita ada RPGT, kita ada ratings dan kita ada juga premium. Kadang-kadang eh. premium yang kena bayar kepada siapa ya? Land premium, you pay to whom? Land premium is under which act? Hello. Oh, no. premium under which area? NLC, I guess. And the NLC ada ke? Ada ke premium under NLC? Ada lah, bagi macam renewal of the lease hold sama dengan itu tenure punya. Itu dalam NLC ke? Itu dalam state land rules. Oh. oh. Okay, if we can go, we can, can move. Okay, kita ada estate agency principles and techniques. Eh. This is more or less, this is more on the techniques. So, you punya techniques. Eh. A simple thing like, I think we have, we need to go to dalam you punya nanti. Uh, week 8. And then we have estate agency at rules and standard. This is quite straightforward. Kita dah ada yang biru ni. You so call biru. Orang lain panggil petua. Saya pun panggil biru. Kita ada rules and, uh, and act. Eh. Okay, if we can go through. Move now. Kita ada the estate agency practice. Okay. What is estate agency practice? Okay. Tengok dalam 22B of the Act or dalam kita punya uh, state standard. Eh? Kalau 22B of the Act, if you can move to 22B of the Act, what is estate agency practice? Itu soalan yang memang kita akan tanya dalam you punya TPC. So if I were the Examiners, I will say, so you want to be an estate agent, that's why you are here. So what is estate agency practice? Okay, apa the estate agency practice? Sujong. Sujong. Hi. <laughs> Hi, estate agency practice. Okay, you have uh, it, 22B, estate agency practice. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. 
Okay. What do you do? So. What's your job? Ren lah, Ren dulu lah. Eh. So have to. So what? What? So. Ah, <laughs> so, uh, nak cakap tu susah. I think so the to disposal, disposal of land and building and, and any interest. Disposal interesting. of land and building. Lagi? And disposal saja. Sale and disposal. Sales and disposal. Yes. Sale and disposal. Lagi? And purchase and acquisition. Purchase and acquisition. And Lagi? Cuba tengok semua dalam item page 6 dalam Malaysian Estate Agency Standard. Eh? Nanti uh, Adipa, you can share eh? the Malaysian Estate Agency Standard. Uh, ini tak ada, ini kena beli kan? Or you have this as well. Adiba, do you have? Are you going to share this as well? You can never believe that. Wait. Ni, ni kalau buat dalam ni kena marah nanti. Ni kena beli eh. Okay, Malaysian Estate Agency Standard is defined under Section 22B of the Act. Okay, Estate Agency Practice 22B, Subsection 1A. Clearly mentioned that you do all these things as an agent or you hold yourself to the public or any individual or firm to act as an estate agent and you do it not for free, you do it for a commission, for a fee, for a reward or other consideration. Ada empat dekat situ eh. Commission, fee, reward or other consideration. So what is the difference between commission and fee? Agak-agaknya lah. Apa beza commission and fee? Apa beza commission and fee, Afiq, agak-agaknya? Afiq? Afiq Daniel, apa beza commission and fee? Hmm. Minya, what's the difference between commission and fee? Hello? Uh, fee is prescribed. He is prescribed by the board. Okay. Schedule. Yep, third schedule, correct. And then commission is based on a percentage on a like selling price or brand. Yes, correct. For example, a commission of a uh, fee is prescribed by the board. Commission is based on project marketing. Eh? For example, you can allow about 5%, 3%. We don't really specify on the project marketing. So reward. What is reward? You don't, don't, don't get the fee, they're not going to give you any commercial, but they will give you reward. For example, if you sell this property, you will get the dato ship, for example. Or I will give you the best uh, estate agent of the year and you get some trophy and also some money as a reward. Or other consideration. Or other consideration. For example, let's say I am a proton dealer, proton car dealer. What is latest proton car yang in the market sekarang? Proton, kita ada kereta apa sekarang ni? X50. X50. Okay, I'm a proton car dealer. So, I'm, I have rows of shop houses. I want to sell three shop houses. But I'm, I want to use the money. So, I'm not going to pay you in terms of dollars and cents. I'm going to pay you because I'm a proton car dealer. I'm going to give you one X50. Am I considered as doing as estate agency practice if you accept the job to sell my three shop houses? Faham tak soalan dia? Uh, yes. Boleh? You? Boleh. Are you? Okay. Boleh. Am I, doing, am I doing an estate agency job? Yes. Yes. Huh? But I don't get the money. I don't have the money. I didn't receive any money. It is a reward. It is a reward. Is it so, a reward? Minta yes. Kan? Yeah, betul saya. It is not a reward. It falls under the category or other consideration. Reward is something that you're going to announce. Other consideration is in lieu of the cash that I have to pay as the form of fee, I'm going to I'm going to pay you as in the form of Proton X50. Boleh faham? So if you accept the job, you are still considered as doing an estate agency, meaning you need to have a registered estate agency practice. Boleh faham? 
you cannot do your estate agency practice on your individual capacity. It has to be on as the basis of a firm. How many types of firm yang you boleh practice? Yang itu pun kita akan dah go through satu satu lecture on firm. Do you have that? Ada kan? Okay. Uh, practice of this. Okay, we try. How many types of firm yang kita boleh consider? Saya dah go through hari tu. Three. Three, what is it? Um, so, proprietorship, partnership, partnership and, and, and the company which... Uh, company, yes. Body corporate or company. Ada tiga, tiga yang you boleh consider. Right. So, come back to this one. Thank you, Lavinia. So, estate agency practice is when you do sale or disposal, building or any interest. It's always building and interest. Eh? When you do purchase, sales, purchase, acquisition or less, less, uh, less leasing or letting, and then you make known of the availability. This is doing project marketing. And the latest one, the board has input tenancy administration to include rental collection, payment of outgoings. This is slightly of a lower level of a property management. It's not property management. It's basically just to follow up of a client that you have introduced as a buyer, as a, uh, as a tenant. And you do the rental collection on behalf of the owner. Okay, so it's just merely limited to rental collection, payment of outgoings, arrangement of minor repairs and handing over, taking over the possession of the property uh, of land and building, that's it, right? Of any land or building or any interest. It's always any interest that boleh tinggal, ya? Sebab kita ada interest of as a leaseholder or interest as a chargey or interest as a uh, what as renting or tenancy itself. Okay. The soalan and all this job, kalau tengok dekat dalam uh, Malaysian Estate Agency Standards, relates to uh, page number six, Estate Agency Practice is all uh, is about the same as per the Act, come from the Act itself or the Section 22B. Malaysian Estate Agency Standards, the third edition 2020, page number six, clearly define what is estate agency practice. Boleh? Okay, can we move now? Right, so kita ada uh, what need to be observed in practice. Ini banyak ya, ini saya kot sikit saja. We first need to have a proper office and requirements to operate as an estate agency firm. You need to have a proper office. So if you can go to the mission estate agency standard, Ada, we have estate agency office dalam standard number one. Are you with me? Or you check it dulu, nanti you come back. Bila dah dah beli nanti. If one, you ada, do you have mission estate agency standards? Siapa yang ada? Kayun, do you have a copy, a copy of this one? Um, PDF. You ada? I didn't get you, Kayun. Do you have a copy of Malaysian Estate Agency Standards? Um, not in hard copy, but in soft copy. Soft copy. So everybody has? Everybody has? Ada. Soft copy. Semua ada. Okay. Kalau semua ada, pergi pada standard number one. Standard number one is Estate Agency Office. Right? So Estate Agency Office, kalau tengok, saya pergi terus pada 1.3.0. We talk about prop office. It has to be a proper office. What is proper office is clearly defined dalam 1.3.0. Ada if one, do you have one? Proper office dalam 1.3.0. If one. Tak ada, tak ada. You tak ada? Kata semua orang ada. Uh, 1.3.0 lah. Ah. Uh, share ke? Share 1.3.1 Ada, dah share dalam group minggu Dah share lepas. dalam group? Ha, macam mana? Oh, jap, jap <laughs> uh, Kawan dah bagi cakap tak ada Tak Okay 1.3.0 Kita ada proper office Apa dia proper office? 
What is proper office? Tikguan, okay. Tikguan cari dulu what is proper office. Tikguan, can you explain what is proper office? Uh, Hello. Uh, proper office means an entity. There are five criteria. I suruh you refer pada balik 1.3.0. Proper oh. office is defined as below. Okay, hmm. okay. Must ah. be located in an area. Area. And then. Apa tak habis baca tu? Mana boleh oh. area set? Baca. Oh, okay, okay. So the first one. Bukan is... baca, baca faham lah. You baca lah, ya tak habis pun. Okay. So the first one is it must be located in an area that is deemed appropriate as an office. Ah, baru lah betul. Area deemed appropriate by as an office and it is determined by the local government law. Means the local authority yang akan determinkan where is a business address. You can't do office in the residential address. Can you do an office dekat Soho? You know what is Soho? Small office. What is Soho? Small office, home office. Kita ada banyak-banyak sekarang. Kita ada Soho lah, Sofo lah, Sobo lah. Benda yang sama saja. It's a combination of residential and office. Okay, the board has actually allowed your operation as an office in Soho, Sobo or Sofo as long as this Soho, Sobo, Soho semua is located in an area that is business address, business area as far as the local government act is concerned, by law is concerned. Okay, so it must be located in an area deemed appropriate as an office. So they can be dekat dalam residential area Soho, bukan residential area as per the building, yang is not designed or designated by the local authority as a business area. Okay, item number two, apa dia? Boleh baca item number two. Uh, Adiba. Okay, Lik Guan, baca balik. Uh, uh, it must be a business premises or a place that has been approved for commercial use like doctor just now you explained. Hmm. And then, so it has to be approved as a commercial use. Eh? Meaning, kalau dia approved, you kena ada license. Kalau once you say approved for commercial use, Maknanya you dapat license untuk operate the business as an office by the local authority. Boleh faham? Okay, number three. Big one, sambung. So, uh, it must not be a place of res residence such as a apartment, condominium, and even a temporary place or a dock or a house. And okay. then the fourth one is not a temporary site sales office or gallery which is the, like the sales gallery lah. this is the number okay. four and then the last one uh, the fifth one oh is, you tak habis baca liguan oh or a project sell ah, dia kena baca bagi habis ya kalau ada or dengan end baca sampai habis jangan habis tengah jalan saja okay so I repeat the fourth one is temporary site sales office or a property gallery or a project sales office or particular project. Uh, or, ada tiga perkara dekat situ. Yeah. Tak ada cannot be in the temporary site office. Site office tak boleh. Dekat property gallery pun tak boleh jadi your estate agency office. Dekat project sales office pun tak boleh jadi your estate agency practice. Tiga address ni tak boleh. Eh. Okay. Then kita ada lagi satu last kali. Uh, virtual, the last one is the virtual and service office are not considered as a proper office. Right, so we do have in the market where you can actually rent the business address. You can, you can actually rent the business address for your business purpose. The board do not allow that for estate agency practice. Some business, they cuma the virtual saja. You pergi cuma the major saja. But you have, you have the uh, mail address. Your, uh, apa ni? You have the your letterhead can use the address of that particular office, but it is still not an office. It's just an office, so that it's just like a dummy office, right? So that you can just rent the address for your business purpose, but not for the professional practice. The board do not allow virtual service office and virtual and service office for your operation of an estate agency business. Okay, so that goes your proper. Office. 
Okay, if you can move down, move back to item 1.2.0. Boleh? 1.2.0, kita ada every firm 1.2.1. Ikhwan, you dah dapat dah? Sudah, sudah. Okay, 1.2.1, every firm including every branch or other office of the firm approved by the board shall operate from a proper office. So the branch or other firm approved by the board shall operate from a proper office which we have gone through tadi. So kalau you tengok item number two, any office or branch office or firm must be under the day-to-day -day control and management of a registered estate agent unless allowed by the board. Okay, 1.2.2, cuba buka dalam rules 105. Boleh? Rules 105. Rules 105, are you with me? No. Okay, what does it mention, Rules 105? Offices and branch offices. Okay, lagi? Uh, uh, registered estate agent's office, including a branch office, shall be headed by a resident registered estate agent, unless otherwise allowed by the board. Okay, so it must be registered by a resident registered estate estate agent. Apa maksud resident? What does it mean when you say resident registered estate agent? Can I, kalau let's say I work here, I stay in my office, I have, a, I, have I stay in my current location, katakan saya duduk dekat Bandar Sri Damansara. Can I become a branch manager of an office in Kuantan? Tak boleh. Be, kenapa tak boleh? Sebab uh, doktor tak resident, tak, bukan resident dekat Kuantan. Bukan resident kat Kuantan. Kalau saya pergi sewa rumah dekat Kuantan, saya ada rumah yang saya sewa atas nama saya, saya bayar api air dekat Kuantan, but actually I just stay there for three days and then I come back to KL. Can I be termed as a resident estate agent? Boleh tak? Agak-agaknya lah. Boleh, kerana you ada bayar tu electricity and the water bill. Ah, sebab saya ada electricity bill to prove that I am a resident there. I don't have to change my address as far as the, my IC is concerned, but I can rent a property there and stay there and show proof that I really stay there by showing the proof of utility bills. I have electricity bills, I have water bills. That's good enough to, as a proof that I am a resident estate agent in Kuantan, even though I actually duduk dekat Bandar Sri Damansara. Boleh faham? Okay, so if you can move down 1.2.3, estate agent or any, shall not allow any other person to carry on the duties and function of estate agent in his firm. Shall not allow or permit any other person to carry on the duties and function of estate agent. Can an estate agent allow his rent to do office management on his behalf. Sui Jong. Hmm. Uh, Sui Jong. Yes. Agak Agaknya boleh tak? Brian boleh sign banyak dokumen kan? Eh. Hmm. Boleh tak yeah. dia sign letter head? Tak boleh. Kenapa tak boleh? Because uh You sign tak? No, Your no. Senior no senior sign tak? Senior rent sign tak? Eh, not ha. sure. Not I sure. No, for rent no. no. Tak boleh, tak boleh sign. Yeah. Hmm. No eh, betul. Cannot. Yeah. Nobody else can sign except for estate agent. Cannot allow any rent to sign. If you allow rent or your so-called senior rent to sign, even if you allow your wife to mention to operate the business or even you allow your husband to operate a business, you are now subject to the disciplinary action. You are doing an offence because you have gone not uh, adhere to the provision under the National Estate Agency standard under 1.2.3. Okay, so that is termed as another offence. Kalau you tengok dekat situ, okay, uh, kita ada dalam rules eh, kita ada dalam rules under code of conduct as estate agent ok, kalau tengok dalam rules 84 
Rules number 84, are you with me? Hmm, banyak sangat nak baca ni. Part 5, part 10, rules 83, until rules. Ah, besar banyak sikit, until rules 110. Eh. They want talk about the code of conduct for estate agents. I only have one slide, but I'm going to go through many, many slides with you without seeing the slide. Okay, rules 84, conduct of registered estate agent. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, so the uh, first one talk about confidentiality of the result and findings of the work report. You cannot release until your client said so, right? And then registered estate agents shall refrain from any act that abuse or take advantage of the confidence. This talk about the confidence uh, by the clients, eh? And the conduct in relation to registered estate agents shall be characterized courtesy and fairness. So, uh, kita stop dulu yang 1.2.3 tadi. Kita go back to uh, rules 84 of your conduct, you must make sure as an estate agent, if your client asks you to sell the property, even the wife also, you cannot reveal to the wife how much do you actually close your deal. If the husband actually appoint, or if the wife will actually appoint you an estate agent, right, the property belongs to her, a wife has engaged you as an estate agent to dispose of his double story bungalow, and you sell for 1.3 million, and initially it's 1.5 million, but then the wife said 1.3 million or so I want to let go. If the husband asks how much do you actually dispose, you cannot reveal 1.3 million close deal to the husband. Because your appointment is to the wife. Okay, for him, unless wife say you can inform him, even though the husband and wife. Okay, for him, Sui Jo. Hmm. Hello. Hi. Not so far. How can you explain again? Not so far. How because you are not here. You talk. That's example. Saya dah bagi example lah tadi. If kata kala isu jangan tu lah. Let's say I am a registered estate agent. I am a registered estate agent. I am appointed by the wife. Say Puan Mariam appoint me to sell her property semuanya. Uh, 1.5 million ringgit banglo, right? And the husband, Encik Tahir, okay, then asked me, how much you jual eh, property to? I cannot reveal how much I actually close deal even to, to the wife, to the husband as Paul Mariam. Okay, I have to go back to Paul Mariam to ask her, ask her, can you let your husband know about, can I let your husband know about the close deal to Mark Sudhir? Because it has to be on the confidentiality, confidentiality, confidence when you result. Confidential when you result. Everything is confidential as long as it's uh, by the client, only for the client. You cannot reveal to other people. Boleh? Boleh faham macam gitu? Boleh, boleh. Okay. So even husband tanya, even wife tanya, you cannot inform them. It has to go back to the client. Can I inform your husband? Can I inform your mom until you have done so? Or until the transaction or proceeding what has been made lapse or being completed? Mana you dah sold, tapi kalau dia belum lagi conclude the sale, what do you understand by we say conclude the sale? What What is it when you say conclude the sale? Siapa, is Chua here, not here? Sui Jong, you are the only one. Siapa lagi yang practice Sui Jong? Nick Guan, do you practice? Tak. Huh? You are the only one. Nick Guan, do you practice estate agency? Uh, no, but I no. hear my senior got. Your your classmate, siapa lagi yang practice selain daripada Sui Jong? Uh, I rasa Sui Jong satu orang sahaja lah. Yang Sui Jong I... satu seorang sahaja. Okay. Dengan Chua lah, Chua is not here. Okay, uh, Sui yeah. Jong. When we say estate agent has only conclude the sale, what does it mean when you say conclude the sale? Conclude means what, Ashley? I think close the deal already. Close. When you say close the deal, until which stage? Sign SPA. Sign SPA close the deal. Yeah. Kalau property say you sign SPA, but then there is a restriction in interest. All transfer must obtain approval by the state authority. You have to sign the SPA. Do you actually close the deal? Because there is a provision in the title that say that you cannot close the deal until you have obtained consent by the state authority. Even yeah. though you sign SPM. 
The special case best Nola. Huh? The special case Nola. Normally. Apa special case ni? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a normal case. All leasehold property in general, you cannot sell, you cannot charge, you cannot lease unless you have obtained the approval or consent from the state authority. You know what? Hmm. Oh. So must be careful eh When you say close to this So maknanya bila you dah sign SPA You cannot inform the buyer I dah jual Kalau state tak lulus You cannot close the deal You cannot claim your fee yet Because you can claim your fee at that stage If the state did not give any approval Of the transfer Then the client can ask that the money from you Boleh? Boleh Okay kan sujung? Okay now come back to this one. Okay, and then you have to conduct as an agent in relation to, in relation to registered as an agent shall be characters by candor, courtesy and fairness. Ini in the case of you what co-agency. What is co-agency, Sujong? You ada buat co-agency tak? Uh, uh, Cobrock, something like this. Ah, sama lah orang tak panggil Cobrock. <laughs> itu macam agent tak ada tahu liah. Itu rank your status. Co-agency. Yeah. Uh, Co-agency is clearly defined dalam Malaysian Estate Agency practice. Okay, if you can go to Malaysian Estate Agency standard, standard number seven, talk about co-agency practice. Nanti yang ni, you akan pergi in detail nanti bila you belajar marketing. Eh, dah belajar marketing kan? You dah belajar marketing estate agency belum? Saya so, belajar. Sudah kan dengan Puan Sharifah? Dengan Dr. Yasmin kan? Okay. Oh, okay, sama. This will be uh, covered dalam co-agency. So, I'm not going to go to read this one. Okay, come back to this one yang tadi. Kita dah ada Malaysia, the office tadi. And the code of practice and conduct level of confidence. And then need to keep informed. Protection of public personal interest to be disclosed. Okay, personal interest to be disclosed. Okay, uh, rules number 88. Eh? Rules number 88. Are you with me? Rules number 88 sub rule 2 boleh baca rules 88 sub rule 2 Are you with me? Yes. Okay, baca cuba baca Ikhwan. Uh, sub 2 uh, registered estate agent shall not undertake to provide professional services concerning a property or its value where he has a personal or contemplated interest unless such interest is specifically disclosed to all affected parties. Okay, what it means is, katakanlah you estate agent, eh? you want to sell a property, katakanlah condominium, dekat mana common condominium dekat sini, okay, condominium apa yang dekat dengan jalan dengan Universiti Melayu? Hipak, eh, sana. University, mana? University Tower. Okay, University Tower, very close, in front of the University Hospital, University Tower. Okay, you want to sell, your client asks you to sell University Hospital, uh, University Tower. How much can you get from the University Tower? 800, 500, boleh jual? Depends, eh? uh, dia ada yang two bedroom, dia ada two plus one bedroom, three bedrooms. Eh? Okay, kata kalau uh, two bedroom, dia nak jual 500,000. You are appointed an estate agent, right? And then you said you want to sell. The client want you to sell 500,000 and say, I want to sell as a fast money. I want to sell uh, 450 like that. Let's say the market is 500. And the client say, I want it to be close D cepat. I want it to be a, a fast close D so that I need the money. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to reduce at 450. You as an estate agent. And then when you go back home, your wife say, I have money. Can I buy? Can the wife buy 450? It's a good buy, good purchase. Can you sell to the wife? Can you sell to the wife? Boleh tak agak-agak? Boleh tak jual pada your wife? Can you go back? Your wife ke, your husband ke? Ah, ni Guan. Boleh tak? Client appoint you nak jual 450,000. Market price 500,000. But you will then go back home, check out Ayo, this property. Boleh I have money? Then the wife say, I have money. I want to buy. Can you sell to your wife 450,000 at the price that is dictated by the client say 450? Can you sell 450 to your wife? Nak bagi client tahu dia wife nak beli dulu lah. Ah, boleh. You can sell to the wife but you must declare. 
you must declare you have a personal interest because the person that you're going to sell to is your wife. Boleh? Itu maksud dia punya personal interest to be disclosed. And then you have the professional fee and then you ada lagi acting on two parties. You cannot act on two parties and claim for both sides. Eh? So saya nak you baca untuk you punya code of conduct untuk estate agency daripada section 83 sampai uh, daripada rules 83 until rules 110. Boleh? Because kita dah tak cukup masa lagi. Boleh? Right? If you can go back to your proper office tadi dalam National Estate Agency Standard, kita tak habis lagi tadi. Kita kata dalam Estate Agency Standard, dia kena ada appointment of rent. Can you go back to uh, my slide? Ada proper office and requirements to operate an estate agency firm. You must, you need to have rent and the rent can be appointed on two basis. Kalau tengok ni dalam estate agency standard, kita ada appointment of rent on two basis. I'm not going to go through into details what you can belajar dalam marketing but it's, it's, it's provided in standard five. Eh? Standard five, kalau you boleh buka standard five, terms of rent, dia ada dua basis, oh bukan, two terms of rent. Uh, rent is under money. Negotiator, standard two. Dalam standard two, when is appointment is uh, appointed on two basis, is either for service or off service. Ada? Ren, are you with me? The other contract off service or contract for service. Dalam 2.2.2, it's under 2.2.2.3.2. Banyak. Are you with me? Page 15, the appointment of yes. rent uh, is on the basis of contract of service or contract for service. Are there basis or not? Contract of service and contract for service. Agaknya lah. Are there basis, yeah? Satu, contract of service maknanya is of, uh, like a uh, with EPF, it's like uh, employee, full time, bila berdua-dua kena full time, but satu is ada EPF, satu tak ada EPF. Boleh faham? Satu is on the commission basis. You pay in home commission, you don't pay him the EPF. Boleh? Okay, never mind, you can go through nanti, pergi balik tanya dalam marketing nanti eh. Okay, and you need to have sign box, you need to have client's account, you need to have a proper sign box, proper office tadi. Kita dah go through dalam proper office, kena ada sign board. Dalam sign board, boleh? Are you still here with me? Yes. Dalam sign board, kita ada specific requirement untuk sign board. Tengok pada rules 1, 2, 2. Rules 1, 2, 2. Are you with me? This is the last one. Jangan tidur. Rules 1 yeah. to 2, sign board and posters. Are you with me? The sign board, ni sign board untuk office eh, bukan sign board untuk buat for sale or for rent eh. Sign board shall not exceed an area of 5 square meters at his place or business. So there is a specific size for the sign board for your office. It cannot exceed more than 5 square meters. Right, so you can use larger signboard as as a project sign, and provided they can add the name of the firm shall not exceed one third of the area of the signboard or posters. Boleh faham? And all the signboard and posters must display his name, registration number, and designation, and the name, address, logo, telephone number, tax number, electronic, and shall display the logo of the board. So all signboard kena ada logo of the board. Are you with me? Hello? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Okay, so logo of board kena ada. When you do an advertisement, okay, when you do an advertisement, juga kena ada logo signboard. Tengok, pala, tengok kepada rules 115A, content of advertisement and announcement. Are you with me? Last one, I'm going to stop now. 
115A, 115A, the content of advertisement can add the registration number of the registered state agent, the name and address, description of the price, and also the box logo, in this case, where necessary. So it has to be can other for color for sale, announcement, publish, promote the interest, you can add the one address. So all this purpose to, to join signboard and advertisement, can other register. Registration number, can add your telephone number of the office, eh? bukan your handphone number saja ya. Boleh nampak tak? Sebab itu, kalau the inspector board punya uh, investigation officer go round, kalau your sign board is only ada nombor rent saja. Betul kan Sri Jom? You kadang-kadang letak nombor rent saja dekat dalam sign board kan? Uh, ah yeah. Ya, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, yeah. ah, it's not correct eh. The telephone number of the office kena ada. Right? And then kena ada the box logo and your REA number, not just your rent number. Kena ada registered number of the registered estate agent and your rent number. Right? So you can go through the detail untuk brochures dalam rules number 116 for further understanding. Boleh faham? Right? So I'm going to stop here. Okay. Dah banyak dah you all baca. Dah banyak dah you all go through dengan saya. Saya rasa dah boleh jadi estate agent dah besok. So besok kita akan ada test. Hello. Besok kita akan ada test. And the test we go through dalam CLO1 which is the function of the board. So saya dah bagi clue. Ada soalan? Eh, tak ada. Ahmad Nazri, are you here? Ahmad Nazri, are you here? Saya panggil balik. Ahmad Nazri, tak ada. Ahmad Nazri pergi mana ni? Kuan? Tak tahu. Ahmad Nazri tak ada. Basan pun tak ada ni. Eh? Basan tak ada. Ahmad Nazri tak ada. Chua also tak ada. Just need to confirm balik. Amiru, you are here eh? Ah, ada, ada. Okay. Right. So Amiru, go through balik. Kita akan ada test besok pukul 10. Uh, okay. Ada soalan? Saya nak stop sharing now. Saya punya uh, Dr. Uh, Prof, can, can you upload this like to the spectrum? Oh yeah, saya tak upload lagi lah. Oh yeah, ni tak saya dah upload. Saya tak upload dekat dalam Google Classroom. Okay, I, I will upload this one. I will. Can right. Doctor, we, we have a Google Classroom? Yes, saya buat tapi saya tak upload apa pun. <laughs> okay. Saya akan cukup. Maka petang ni saya akan sangat saya penuh. Uh, saya ada meeting pukul 2 sampai pukul 6 hari ni. Okay. Uh, right. Oh. Yes. Besok test pukul berapa? Pukul 10. Unless you want early, boleh je. But we have pre presentation first. Yes, ada presentation dulu. Lepas tu baru test. Test macam mana? Dia online ke? Ataupun bertulis? Test oh, bertulis, lepas tu you submit. Alright. Okay, kita akan buat presentation dulu pukul 10 sampai pukul 11 dan kita akan ada test 11 sampai pukul 12, pendek saja. Unless you want an early class, boleh juga. Tapi kita habis sampai pukul 1 besok kan, slot kita. Kita boleh je buat pukul 11 sampai pukul 1 pun boleh kan? Boleh. Tak nak jawab. Boleh, boleh, boleh. boleh. Oh, yeah. Okay, Good. kita tengok lah besok macam mana ya. Nanti kan you open sun nanti. So go through balik on the first week, the functions of the board. Kita dah go through lah itu, the functions of the board basically ada enam perkara. But I'm going to ask sampai, uh, I will not ask on the disciplinary proceedings for that one is very detailed. The group dah bagi very detail on that. And then kita ada approve and reject application for registration, conduct examination, prescribe fee. And to regulate conduct pun basically kita dah uh, your colleagues dah present macam dah jadi duplicate hari tu. And we have yet to listen to the group yang role of registered valuer, appraiser and estate agent. And kita ada dua group, the, the last group yang the previous group saya bagi hari tu, dia dah soalan dia dah jadi sama. Okay. Uh, so far kita ada dua group untuk presentation for tomorrow. The role of registered valuer, appraiser uh, the role saja ya, jangan pergi yang lain ya. And then kita, oh ni dah present ke belum semalam? Dah kan? Okay ni, have you, have you present to uh, Sri Jung? 
Yeah. Kita yeah. ada tiket yeah. kan? Yes. Ha. So besok kita cuma ada satu group saja who is going to go through who are the registered valuer and what need to be done to fulfill the requirement to be registered valuer. Itu saja untuk besok. Boleh? And the other group nanti saya akan bagi tajuk dia, Adiba. But untuk besok kita ada satu group yang akan present untuk jadi valuer. Because saya tak nak disturb you all. Baca balik apa dia the functions of the board because our test tomorrow is going to confine to the functions of the board untuk besok punya test 20% scale 01 ok, ada soalan lagi thank you can I say thank you now yeah. thank ok, you. so thank you, have a good ada kelas kod dua kan tak ada ok, bye thank you thank you bro thank you bro thank you bro thank you bro